Hey guys, welcome to my 28 week bump date. This week, baby is the size of a roller blade. You know, like if you want to go roller skating, that's he's the size of one of those. <laughs> I haven't roller skated in a long time. I used to do it a lot when I was little. Um, we had a skating rink, like a roller blade rink, uh, two of them by my house and those are always super fun. I actually had my birthday party there at one and it was really fun. So anyway, maybe he's the size of that. He's also the size of an eggplant. I don't really eat eggplant, so I mean like I know what one looks like, but like I don't really know size wise. Um, and he's also the size of a coconut. Baby is starting to be able to control his own temperature, which isn't that big of a deal right now while he's inside of me, but once he comes out, he will need to be able to do that with all the different climate changes, especially in Ohio because we have crazy climate changes. So yes, he needs to do that. And then also he's just taking over and producing more hormones. He's starting to produce hormones to get my milk to start coming in, which is a good thing so I can breastfeed again. So yeah, he's um, just really fattening up. A lot of like the crucial like development is already done, I think. So a lot of this is just like putting on pounds, filling out, you know, the skin so he's not so wrinkly and just developing here and there. This week, since it was my 28 week of pregnancy, I had my next doctor's appointment, which was crazy because I had not been to the doctor in eight weeks. Two months, um, not since my anatomy scan because of coronavirus, they wanted me to limit my um, visits and I'm a very typical normal pregnancy and so they didn't feel the need to um, have me come in a bunch of times. So anyway, so I went into my doctor's office. They did take my temperature as soon as I went in the building. Interestingly, and usually I've only ever had my temperature taken through my forehead, but this time when I went in the building, they had me take, they took my temperature on the inside of my wrist, which was really interesting. Not sure why they did that, although I was talking to Anthony afterwards and he was saying that at his work, they would take the temperature on his wrist too. Didn't even know you could take the temperature on your wrist, but apparently you can. <laughs> so anyway, I had to wear a mask, so I did wear a mask the whole appointment, which was annoying. I mean, I don't enjoy wearing masks, but I get why. Um, I went in and I checked in. Um, if you remember from my last doctor's appointment, they had like a long red line that you had to stand behind of, like so you were six feet away from the front desk, but they had gotten rid of that. So I guess that wasn't as big of a deal anymore. I don't know. Anyway, so I checked in. I left a urine sample. Um, I had to pee so bad. I was waiting because I wanted to make sure I could like leave enough pee for them. They took my weight. And I weighed myself on my own last night because I don't do, I don't really take into account the weight at the doctor's office because I leave my shoes on and fully clothed, like I just don't care about that. But when I weighed myself um, last night, I have gained 18 pounds so far in this pregnancy. Again, I want to gain somewhere between 25 and 35 pounds, so doing fine on that. Um, they also took my blood pressure, which it was fine. It was like 122 over 80 or something, so I think that's fine. Um, last pregnancy, towards the end, I had a problem where my blood pressure kept rising, and it wasn't because I had preeclampsia. I was just getting nervous before every appointment, so now I try to like really calm myself before I go in so they don't freak out that I have high blood pressure. It's just my heart is pounding because I'm so nervous. Anyway, so they took that. Um, I had to do the glucose test. Um, you usually do that around 28 weeks and so I had the lemon lime drink so I took it 45 minutes at home before my appointment. I had to drink it within 10 minutes which was no problem for me. I drank it like within five minutes and it actually tasted pretty good. It tasted either like flat Sprite or if you've ever had a green uh, flavor ice like you know those little popsicles it tasted like one of those so it wasn't bad it was fine it wasn't as flavorful as the fruit punch but they were both fine whatever baby was kicking up a storm because you know they put so much sugar in those drinks to see if your body can absorb it so he was having a heyday but anyway that was fine so then they took my um drew my blood 
um, exactly an hour later, and they took a lot of blood. They took like four vials of it. The lady who drew my blood, though, she was actually really good at it. She, um, the Pope didn't even hurt that bad and just seemed to go fast, so. Not fun, but I did do that, and then they also gave me two shots, in, one in each arm. I got the uh, Tdap shot for whooping cough in my right arm, which stung, and it's, my arm is still sore from it. And then I got my Rogam shot in my left arm, which that one really stung going in, but it doesn't hurt too much anymore. I got the Rogam shot because I have a negative blood type, and Anthony has a positive blood type and so they have to give me that shot to make sure that my body does not fight off a baby. Um, Grayson ended up being, so I'm A negative and Anthony is B positive and Grayson ended up being A B positive. So because he had a positive blood type they had to give me a shot after birth as well. So we'll see with this baby if he's the same or what his blood type is. But they gave me the first one. If he ends up having a positive blood type then they'll give me another one after I deliver. Last time, um, even though they had to give me another shot, they just gave it to me in my leg and I was still numb from the epidural so I didn't even feel it at all. It was great. I have heard that some people get the, have to get the Rogam shot in their butt, which that would be super awkward. So I'm glad I didn't have to do that. They just gave it to me in the arm. I've always ever had it in the arm or I guess I had it in the leg um, because I was numb, but I've never had it in the butt, so that was really interesting. And then the whooping cough, the Tdap shot, they just recommend all moms get it every time you're pregnant because the antibodies from the shot will be passed onto baby uh, while baby's inside of you. Um, whooping cough is very, very fatal for babies and infants um, if they get it, and I guess it's very easy to catch it, and I think you, I think babies can't get the vaccine for whooping cough until six months old. So they recommend that you get it now while the baby's inside of you and then the baby will start getting the antibodies from it to protect itself. I know a lot of people refuse the Tdap shot. I guess it's just kind of up to you, um, but I got it and it's, my arm's just sore from it. So. so anyway, yeah, they gave me those shots. My doctor came in to check on me. Um, we measured my belly and I'm actually measuring a week ahead. So I had my appointment and I was um, one day shy of 29 weeks and when she measured my belly I was measuring 30 weeks. So I've never had that happen before. All throughout my first pregnancy with Grayson, every time we measured I was right on track every week that I should have been. So to be one week ahead is interesting. I guess I'd rather be one week ahead than a week behind. Um, so I'm just not sure if this means he's going to be a bigger baby or um, what this means. So maybe I have to be induced early. I don't know. But anyway, I was measuring a week ahead. She did the uh, fetal monitor to check the heartbeat. And at first um, he was just chilling, but he, I guess he did not like that monitor because as soon as she started trying to find his heartbeat, he started kicking like crazy. He was kicking the monitor, which I remember with Grayson, every time she would do it, Grayson would kick the monitor too. So his heart rate ended up being like 147, 148. So it was a good heart rate. And he is definitely kicking a lot. Um, he's moving a lot more lately. So anyway, yeah, the appointment went great. Um, they said that they will call me in a few days about my glucose test results. I hope I pass. I hope I don't have to take the three-hour test. I didn't have to last time with Grayson. I just passed. Um, my doctor was saying a lot of times during the second pregnancy, a lot of moms will become anemic. Just because pregnancy is just really hard on your body and you're trying to, you know, support, like, you know, build a baby inside of you. And so the more kids you have, the harder it is on your body. I'm hoping I pass it though. I really like my sweets. As you know, one of my cravings is ice cream and so I will be very, very sad if I have to limit my um, sugar intake. So we'll see. Um, I tried to not have too many sugary foods before I went. My doctor's office doesn't require you to fast before your um, glucose test. Some do. But so um, I'm waiting for those results. Hopefully it goes well. Um, I asked my doctor about the hospital and she says 
Um, things are getting better. The hospital that I'm gonna deliver in so far has had zero um, positive coronavirus cases, which is like unheard of. So that's really good to hear. Um, there's still only one visitor allowed, so I'm hoping they allow at least one more um, by the time we give birth so like some people can come visit us, but I'm just not sure. We still have like three more months to go. Um, and she said that um, the dads can now leave the room and come back at like in the beginning when it was really bad like you had to stay in the room you couldn't leave at all and so now the dad can go away and come back go get coffee and stuff which Anthony's gonna need a lot of coffee so I'm sure he's happy about that and, and also dads can now leave the hospital and come back that was forbidden as well so they are easing up, it is getting better. Ohio coronavirus cases are going down, our deaths are way down, hospitalizations are down. So I'm hoping three more months into this in September, um, it'll be a lot better. I'm thankful that I am due in September um, on the end of the warmer months because it's just so unknown, like in the winter, if this coronavirus is going to ramp up in the winter, like with and be seasonal just with like the flu and stuff so I'm happy that I'm going to be able to just get all this done um, before it gets really bad. So all in all it was a great appointment. I scheduled my next doctor's appointment so they wanted me to come in uh, four weeks so in a month but uh, when I went to go schedule we realized that my doctor is actually going to be out of the office the week that I'm supposed to come. I guess she's going on vacation. Good for her. And so um, we actually ended up sc scheduling the appointment the week before. So instead of going in four weeks, I'm going in three weeks, like mid-July, July 14th or something. So that's my next appointment. Nothing too crazy there. They're just going to measure my belly, hear the heartbeat again. So it was a great appointment. I'm glad it was done and I'm glad I was okay. My temperature was great. I 7.3 I think they said so everything is looking good with baby my symptoms this week it's really just a lot of back pain um, it's getting worse especially the most time that I feel it is when I'm driving and I don't know why I must sit weird when I drive but man it really hurts my back and it's just like the center of my back and so I'll try to like put my hand on it try to put pressure on it sometimes it helps sometimes it doesn't and then also I still get that lower right rib pain as well. Um, I think baby's just stretching out and getting bigger and running out of room. I am exhausted. I feel like the sleep, my sleep, I mean I feel like I'm sleeping throughout the night pretty well. I do get up at least once, sometimes twice through the night to go to the bathroom, but then I'm always able to fall asleep usually pretty fast. But I wake up every morning, even though I go to bed at a decently good time, I'm exhausted in the mornings. And so I'm usually having to like take coffee a little bit here and there and I just get so tired. Last night it was like 10 o'clock at night and we were watching a show on Netflix and I was having the hardest time just keeping my eyes open. I was just so tired. So my energy is going down a little bit. My heartburn flares up here and there. I haven't had to take, I think I had to take Tums once last week, but that was it. And so my um, heartburn hasn't been too, too bad, but I do feel it mostly at night. I do still have um, leg cramps that I've been dealing with. Um, it seems like in the mornings, like I'll just want to stretch out and that's like the worst thing to do apparently for my legs because I will get leg cramps, um, Charlie horses. And so I have to like f quickly flex my legs so that um, it doesn't get worse. But it seems like it's only in the morning that I'm having that happen. My belly is getting bigger. Obviously I, my belly is measuring a week ahead. So I'll show you guys a bump shot. Okay, so here is the belly. Getting bigger. I thought my belly was measuring kind of small, but Apparently to my doctor, I'm measuring a week ahead. <laughs> I'm still craving a ton of sweets, cookies, candy, ice cream, all of that sounds amazing to me. I'm still eating a lot, like I'm always hungry, I don't like to skip meals. <laughs> um, but I haven't had any like other cravings other than sweets. I'm still like really hot easily, like at night. 
I usually have to just like sleep with nothing on top of me because I'm so hot at night. So, um, and of course it has been heating up because it's summer. So, um, I'm just trying to keep as cool as I can. I've been putting my hair up a lot in ponytails and that seems to help a lot. So yeah, I think that's all for this week. Sorry, this was kind of a longer um, vlog, but just because I wanted to tell you all about my doctor's appointment. So make sure to subscribe, uh, like this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!